We're good to go. All right, so how to give the world's best talk. Um, so many people start off with a title slide, and you'll hear that you should have something catchy, memorable, informative about what you're speaking about, but that is all wrong. You really want here is vagueness and intrigue. Because if you're you know, giving an intro, you're talking about what they're going to learn, a catchy hook, all that is a crutch that is covering up for a bad talk. And you, if you need to use audience engagement, you are doing it wrong. Your talk should stand on its own. <laughs> now, after your, your title slide, some people say you should do an agenda. Don't do an agenda. What you really need to do is, it's going to ruin the surprise of the rest of the talk. And like, do you think that, you know, Disney told Abraham Lincoln the agenda for Space Mountain? No. <laughs> yeah, like the surprise is what's going to stick it in their mind. If they have a structure to remember it, it, it the, the whole thing is wasted. So there's really three archetypes to a great talk. And in no particular order, it's the My Super Project talk, the Wonder Wall, and the Bait and Switch. And so the first one here, the My Super Project talk, it, the core goal here is to show everyone what a genius you are, how smart you are. Now, the subject of this talk, ideally it's something very obscure and personally relevant to you that, that maybe not many people are interested in, so you're kind of like, it's edgy and, and memorable. Um, here, I, I always try to avoid any meta-learnings, like talking about things that can be generalized to other people's work or interests. And on the same vein, you really want to avoid talking about why you chose this path versus another. Because all that do, does is take away from the brilliance of your own intellect. So, um, and, and you know, in the end, it's about you. You're the one giving the talk. You're the speaker. It's not about the audience. So that should be in forefront of your mind throughout the whole process. The Wonder Wall. So, this is the wall of text that I will now read verbatim in a monotone voice talk. With average literacy levels among U.S. adults on the decline, it is essential that you read every painstaking word on each slide rather than condense the information to bullet points and elaborate the core concepts verbally to the audience in an engaging way. It's much better to simply read off the slide because A, you'll never forget what you have to say, and B, if you find the prospect of large groups stressful, you can simply face away and bask in the glow of the neon screen. It's important to note that this technique is fully compatible with the former and subsequent archetypes and need not be used by itself. The bait and switch. This is probably my favorite type of talk to give. So the important thing here is you are selling something. And Paramount is you really can't tell the audience ahead of time that you are selling a product. That needs to be a surprise partway through the presentation. Um, so the fact that you work for a company, don't put that in anywhere in your, in your speaker, you know, summary of it. Just, just slide it in somewhere in the middle of the talk. Now, I like to make sure that all the content of the talk is generic and not deep cuts. They're not here to learn something, they're here to buy your product. So, you know, it doesn't matter if, you know, you pick something generic like maybe DevOps for business intelligence or something like that, or even if it's, if it's specific like CQRS and financial transactions, you need to only hit the high notes of there's a website, there's a database, and that's why you need to buy my DataBank 2000 product. <laughs> Don't actually get into like what CQRS is. And, and really, you'll actually, you know, and so it's just important to, to put that product into every possible slide that you can. <coughs> you know, and if you fundamentally misunderstand what you're actually talking about, but do you still hawk your product, that, that is the chef's kiss <laughs> that we're going for today. And always remember, always be closing over <coughs> having good content. <laughs> So just, you know, now we've gone through the main types of talks that you should be shooting for, the super pro techniques that I like to, to sprinkle in. For delivering format is eye contact. Either just don't do it, or pick out one person <laughs> the whole time and not blink, because that really connects you to the audience. The other thing is lacing in with tech jargon and acronyms where you never explain what they are. You know, saying your HS256 you know, signature algorithm on the you know, JSON web stream. Like, just don't even say what it is. Just keep spilling more <laughs> acronyms out there so they, again, realize how smart you are because this is about you. Um, graphics, things to break up the text. 
bad. Again, these are crutches. These are things that are only going to take away from the brilliance of your talk, not actually <coughs> add to it. And animations, the more and the more complex they are, the better. Everyone loves a good animation. <laughs> Preparation. It's a big time crutch. You shouldn't do it. Because, you know, time management is for nerds. The, the speaker organizers, that was their own problem when they invited you. You're going to take as much time as you need to get the, 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 the talk out. Um, and similarly, when you haven't practiced, you tend to fill in the ums and uhs and uh, like ums. Your brain is so good at that, at humanizing you, so people you know, don't, don't think you're stuck up or something. So I think no practice is the way to go. Um, some people that end their talk like to put a conclusion slide in here. That's pandering. Don't do it. <laughs> you don't want to treat your audience like idiots. Your talk was so brilliant, it should be indelibly <coughs> burned onto their brain you know, for the rest of time. Um, calls to action, not great unless you're selling something. And then the call to action can be buy the product. Um, and so finally, if you've enjoyed this talk, please follow me on LinkedIn. My name is Andrew Thompson. You can join my LinkedIn group, Thought Leadership Through Humble Bragging, and asking unsolicited, pedantic, and patronizing questions. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions? We don't have time for questions. <laughs>